Hello, my name is Susan Sharp, and I'm from Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I will be speaking on meta iodobenzyl guanidine. I have no financial disclosures. However, I will be discussing novel pet tracers and the use of iodine-131 MIBG therapy, which are not FDA approved. During this talk, I'm going to discuss the utilization of MIBG in neuroblastoma for imaging and investigational therapy, focusing on current practice and future directions. MIBG is an analog of norepinephrine with uptake into cells by the norepinephrine transporter. The majority of neuroblastoma cells express the norepinephrine transporter with uptake of MIBG. Iodine-123 MIBG remains the first-line functional imaging agent in neuroblastoma assessment. It's highly sensitive and specific for neuroblastoma with uptake in greater than 90% of tumors. Over the past decade or so, there's been increasing use of SPECT-CT as part of iodine-123 MIBG imaging evaluations. The use of SPECT-CT has been shown to improve the certainty of lesion detection and uptake localization, and is especially uh, useful for small retroperitoneal foci of uptake, as demonstrated in the case of a small T12 pedicle metastasis shown on the right, which was nicely demonstrated by SPECT-CT. At diagnosis, iodine-123 MIBG has been deemed essential for initial staging, demonstrating both soft tissue and skeletal disease sites. During and after therapy, MIBG scans provide functional evidence of residual tumor and have been shown to be the most sensitive method to evaluate for residual disease and unsuspected relapse. Semi-quantitative MIBG scoring systems have been developed for use in neuroblastoma. These scoring systems quantitate disease extent and response, and also improve precision and concordance between readers, which is especially important in multicenter trials. These scoring systems have also been shown to be a prognostic indicator for high-risk patients, particularly after induction therapy. The most commonly utilized MIBG scoring systems include the modified Curie scoring system and the Siopin scoring system shown here. The Curie scoring system divides the skeleton into nine segments with a 10th segment used for any soft tissue disease sites. Each segment is then scored on a scale of zero to three depending on disease extent with a maximum score of 30. In the Siopin scoring system, the skeleton is divided into 12 segments with no soft tissue segment. Each skeletal segment is scored from 0 to 6, depending on disease extent, with a maximum score of 72. Both the Curie and Siopin scoring systems have been shown to have prognostic implications in neuroblastoma, with scores after induction therapy highly predictive of survival. Poor event-free survival is seen in patients with Curie scores greater than two and Siopin scores greater than three after induction therapy. Alternative therapeutic regimens are often implemented in patients with higher scores in an attempt to improve survival. FDG PET-CT is widely utilized in oncology patients and commonly used in neuroblastoma to evaluate non-MIBG avid disease. However, FDG PET-CT lacks the specificity of MIBG for neuroblastoma. There's been interest in developing novel PET tracers to target specific tumors. Potential molecular targets for neuroblastoma include the norepinephrine transporter, as well as the somatostatin receptor and catecholamine metabolism. For the purposes of this talk, I'm going to discuss iodine-124 MIBG, and the F18 labeled analog of MIBG, F18 MFBG. The use of iodine-124 MIBG PET-CT has been described in a small number of neuroblastoma patients as part of iodine-131 therapy planning or as disease monitoring in patients with metastatic disease. When compared to iodine-123 MIBG, iodine-124 MIBG PET-CT shows improved disease detection, 
However, it imparts a much higher radiation dose to the patient. This higher radiation dose is a result of the complex decay pattern demonstrated by iodine-124, which includes 25% positron emission and 75% electron capture. The electron capture component of the decay pattern results in multiple high energy single photon, which increases the radiation dose to the patient and also increases the scatter and background noise, degrading the PET image quality. Due to the drawbacks of the iodine-124 label, there's been increasing interest in developing an F18 labeled MIBG analog. The use of F18 MFBG PET-CT has been described in a small number of neuroblastoma patients. When compared to iodine-123 MIBG scans, FMFBG PET-CT scans depict more disease sites and impart a similar radiation dose to the patient. MFBG imaging also allows same-day injection and scanning, which is often more convenient for patients and their families than the two-day imaging protocol needed for MIBG. There are several advantages of these novel PET tracers, including higher spatial resolution, which increases disease detection, quantifiable uptake, which allows SUV measurements, faster image acquisition times, which may obviate the need for sedation or anesthesia in some younger pediatric patients. And then the possibility of whole body tomographic field of view, which is important in neuroblastoma patients who often demonstrate widespread skeletal metastatic disease. The disadvantages of these novel PET tracers include the expertise needed for synthesis and the regulatory issues that limit availability. As stated, both of these uh, novel PET tracers I've discussed are not FDA approved. I'm going to move on to talk about MIBG therapy. The rationale for therapeutic use of MIBG in neuroblastoma therapy is that neuroblastomas are a highly radiosensitive tumor and that dose can be delivered by the beta particle of the iodine-131 label. MIBG uptake is seen in greater than 90% of neuroblastomas with the ability to target both the primary tumor and metastatic sites. The use of iodine-131 MIBG therapy is still investigational, primarily used for salvage in relapsed and refractory high-risk patients. Tumor response is seen in 30 to 40% of patients, although the effect on survival is still uncertain. Additional studies have investigated the use of MIBG therapy as part of induction or consolidation therapy. The investigational use of iodine-131 MIBG therapy has been ongoing for more than 30 years at this point. Initial studies in the late 1980s and 1990s included feasibility and phase one dose escalation trials in refractory and relapsed high-risk patients to determine the most appropriate treatment dose. Myelosuppression was seen with doses of greater than 12 millicuries per kilogram. In the late 1990s, MIBG therapy was used in conjunction with autologous bone marrow transplant, allowing for increasing dose administration. Over the past 20 years, studies have looked at how best to incorporate MIBG therapy into neuroblastoma treatment including the use of MIBG monotherapy, multiple MIBG infusions, the combination of MIBG with bone marrow transplant and myeloblative chemotherapy, and the use of MIBG therapy with radiosensitizers or agents that enhance the norepinephrine transporter expression. More recently, iodine-131 MIBG therapy has been used at diagnosis or as part of induction chemotherapy. These are high dose therapies with administered doses of up to 18 millicuries per kilogram per infusion. They are performed in the inpatient setting with appropriate shielding and isolation for radiation protection. The main toxicity is myelosuppression with stem cell salvage often required. Multicenter trials continue to investigate the optimal timing of iodine-131 MIBG therapy and the most effective combination of therapies to maximize response without unacceptable toxicities. Future investigations of other molecular targets for therapy will include the somatostatin receptor. 
In summary, iodine-123 MIBG is the primary functional imaging agent used for neuroblastoma assessment. The increasing use of SPEC-CT has improved the certainty of lesion detection and uptake localization. MIBG scoring systems have been developed for use in neuroblastoma with scores having prognostic implications in high-risk patients, particularly after induction therapy. Novel PET tracers include molecular targets for neuroblastoma, including the norepinephrine transporter as indicated by the PET agents, iodine-124 MIBG and 18F MFBG in neuroblastoma. And finally, iodine-131 MIBG therapy in neuroblastoma is performed as part of research trials as either a single agent or as part of combination therapy. It's utilized in relapsed and refractory disease or as part of induction and cons consolidation therapy. Thank you very much.